Colin Baldridge. David kind of stole my first few slides, so I'll uh, briefly give an introduction about myself and why I'm here today. Um, it's really an honor to be here. So I um, went to medical school here at Penn. I, between my third and fourth years of medical school, I took some time off to work full time for the CBCN. Um, originally, during the first year, my role was chief of staff and um, I served as a patient navigator. So I spoke to hundreds of patients, um, a few faces that I recognize here today. Um, I was at other patient summits. You see my small head up in the top left corner. Um, <laughs> and then the second year, I worked conducting CD research. So you'll see. Uh, this is the result of many, many hours that I spent tracing very small or large lymph nodes um, to try to characterize uh, CD lymph nodes. And I graduated from medical school. You can see David here with me at my graduation. Yay. And I'm now a psychiatry resident here at Penn. Um, so I'm here today because I really care deeply about this community. The time that I spent working with you guys opened my eyes to what it means to live with a chronic illness and how tough it can be. Um, it's part of the reason that I'm going into psychiatry and that I dedicated my life to mental health. Um, it's really, really challenging living with a chronic disease, um, especially a, a rare one, a life-threatening one, or potentially. Um, and so today I want to start first by recognizing the strength of you all in this room and in this community. It is so powerful to be in your presence and work with you. Um, and as a psychiatrist, I spend most of my time thinking about how people interact with the world, how they experience life. And I also try to see how I can help them. Um, best to live their, their fullest, most meaningful, and joyful life. Um, and so I'm here today as both a psychiatrist and a member of this community to hopefully give you some tools that you can call upon in moments of need. So I think you guys know this better than I do, but um, few people really know what it means to live with a chronic disease, um, particularly a, a rare one like this. Um, the challenges, like even in the brief time that I've been in this room, I, I hear that it's the challenges that you guys are facing are daily, they're ongoing. Um, and it's so incredible how resilient you guys are. Um, so we don't have much time today, so I'm going to dive in. Um, I want to talk about a couple tools that you guys can use, as well as the research behind the suggestions that I'm making. Um, and at the end, we'll practice with, with each other. Okay, so research has shown that cultivating positive emotion overall, um, um, so cultivating positive experience leads to overall better health and well being. So, this particular study um, is one that asks participants to. Uh, journal once a week for about two months. There were three groups. Um, you'll see a grateful group that uh, wrote down experiences that they felt grateful for in their life. Um, this group <coughs> wrote down experiences that they felt burdened by. And then the third group was, um, they were tossed with writing down experiences that they felt neutral about. No positive or negative attributes. And interestingly, the, the experiences that they were asked to record were not limited to that particular week. It could be from any time in their life. So they had the freedom to choose anything, and examples of gratefuls included waking up today, uh, the generosity of friends, um, religious icons, even the Rolling Stones. <laughs> so I want to highlight that the act of actually acknowledging positive experiences in these participants' lives um, once a week for two months actually led to better overall emotional and physical well-being. So in these participants, you can see that the grateful group, their experience 
so life as a whole, for, of their immediate future, of actual physical symptoms, and time spent exercising increased as a result of this act of journaling, one time a week. I think it's pretty powerful. And so why is this happening? It's because it's evolutionarily adaptive, and what that means is that individuals with more positive emotions actually pursue more opportunities and thrive more. Positive emotions change the way that we see the world, and there are a lot. Of, there's a lot of research about this. Um, the whole. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you have heard of it, but broaden and build theory of positive emotion kind of explains why positive emotions impact us in this way in multiple domains of our life, including physical health and well-being, um, and just generally overall quality of life. Um, when we experience more love, gratitude, joy, and zest for life, we're actually more engaged in our environment, we pursue more opportunities. And it leads to this like, change in the lens that we view our world actually leads to better outcomes. So a classic example is that individuals who experience more positive emotion actually register more of their environment. So their visual field is actually expanded to see more. They see the tops of buildings where other people wouldn't. Um, it's pretty incredible. So it, it cultivating positive emotion actually changes how we see our external environment. So positive emotions are also behaviorally activating. Um, people have a higher performance, uh, more successes in various areas. Um, one example of this is actually very interesting to me as a doctor, so that's a study where there, there were two groups of doctors, they were tasked with um, meeting with patients, interviewing them, assessing, and making a, a clinical assessment and treatment recommendations. One group was given an unexpected gift. It was really tiny, just a piece of candy. Um, and the other group didn't get anything. Okay? So this, the one group that had an induced positive emotion from receiving an unexpected gift actually had better outcomes in terms of their clinical uh, diagnosis and treatment recommendations. So people actually perform better and have more success when they feel positive emotions. It's pretty incredible. So maybe take some chocolate. <laughs> so the the other really cool thing about positive emotions is that they're not, the, the effects aren't just in that moment, right? They have really lasting impacts. Um, another study showed that writing three good things that happened each day for only one week made people happier and less depressed. And this effect was shown six months ago. The intervention was only journaling for one and it had a positive impact. That, that is just so cool. And that's what we're gonna to practice today. Um, before we do that, I think it's important to acknowledge, like maybe you're asking, how can this apply to me as someone with a chronic illness? Um, and I think that's a great question, because your experience of life is different, right? But what studies have shown is that people with living with chronic illnesses such as cancer, COPD, diabetes, they benefit similarly from cultivating positive emotions. Okay, so how do we, how do we accomplish this? Um, it's, it's challenging, right? You guys have, in addition to regular life stresses, family stuff, work stuff, school, kids, you also have the stresses of living with seeking. So physical symptoms, the emotional toll it takes, the financial toll it takes, it's a lot, right? And so why do we practice on days like today when you're surrounded by a community, when you feel the love and support, 
when you're learning new things and energized. We practice on moments in moments like this so that on days when you're going to a doctor's appointment, when you're nervous about a test result or a new treatment, that in those moments you can still find joy and fulfillment in your life. And so um, I think we should take a moment and practice. And so does everyone have paper and pens? Well, even if you don't, um, take a moment to think of three things that you're grateful for. And we have a couple minutes, so um, yeah, take a moment and think about it, and then share it with your neighbor. Okay, I think probably everyone has had time to share at least one good thing. Um, I just wanted to take a poll of the room. What did it feel like to have to think of things that you're grateful for that are good in your life? And what did it feel like to have to share them out loud? <coughs> Our hope is that even with fossil disease, that you feel joy, that you have a meaningful and fulfilling life. And the same goes for loved ones too, right? Like we all want you to, to feel joy and, and have happiness together. Um, and while well, I think the actual act feels kind of silly, at least when I have done it in the past, it's like, well, today was a really tough day. I went to work, I missed lunch, but like I got to spend time with my fiance. And that's like my good thing, and it builds you up. And as you said, it gets easier and easier, right? You're more attuned to notice the positive. Okay, so I'm very aware of time. So, um, this is a really, really good intervention that psychologists use a lot. Um, there's a lot of data behind it, and I want to challenge everyone in the room, including patients, loved ones, volunteers, to do it for the next week. And just see how you feel. See if it resonates with you. Um, I think also it's important to note that doing something like this doesn't mean that you have to pretend you're happy or that everything is great all the time. Life is really tough, especially when you're living with a disease like Alzheimer's disease. Um, and it doesn't mean that you can't acknowledge that. The idea is to just cultivate joy while experiencing that. Um, and so, let's see. Um, I also just wanted to give some other resources. Um, I am always available to be reached. I am a psychiatrist. I also have spoken to many, many patients living with Kalsman disease. If you want to speak to someone who kind of straddles the world of mental health and Kalsman disease, I care you can reach out to me. Um, Maleva and just the CBC in, in gen CBCN in general is here. Um, I think everyone should save this number in your phone. Not only are we here to kind of help navigate getting the right doctor and treatments, we're also here to connect you with other patients or loved ones that are experiencing the same thing. Um, being connected with a community is one of the most powerful things that we can do in times of need. That's why days like this are so important. Um, we all know that not everyone lives close to Kalsman disease patients. And so sometimes it requires picking up a phone, but if you do, we're here. So please save the number. Um, Aleva would be so happy to connect you with other people in the community. <coughs> and I'm happy to talk to anyone if you have questions about connecting with a counselor or a therapist or a psychiatrist, or maybe even what's the difference between the three of them. Um, does anyone have any questions? Thank you so much. Thank you.